Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue on handling the event. Uh, so we have seen the major part of handling the event, which is regarding the button and the checkboxes and also like the input box. So we can pretty much like derivate like all the other handling from this one. Uh, one thing which is left uh, from such cases is uh, the utilization of like the form. So as you know, like um, we're going to utilize like the text box or the, the check boxes or the uh, uh, radio buttons and whatnot. All of them are going to be just used under the form. So we are going to see on how we're going to be just using a form uh, on this area, uh, on this uh, video, sorry. So the way how we're going to do it is, you might have guessed this already, we're going to use like a form. And we're going to copy that and I'm trying not to copy that. We're going to cut that uh, X and we are going to be just putting it like right above the last day. And let me fix the formatting. And we have in such cases and uh, let's, uh, once we do that one, I'm going to add like uh, a button. Usually that's what we're going to do. Like once we want to add that one. So button uh, then type is going to be the submit and we're going to say, click uh, for or something just simply. So this is like a, a very usual kind of like adding the uh, a form and then just having like at the end of it, we're going to have like one button which would be saving or which would be uh, usually like submitting all the data on the given form that's collected. So if we go back on this one, uh, this one is like very tied to this one. So let's change it. Uh, into that, let me give it like a class uh, name, uh, submit button, and I'm going to copy that and save that. And here I'm going to and uh, margin uh, that's going to be the top. So let me give it like 30 pixel. So we have like a, a little bit of room so that we can see it clearly. Now, what I want you to see is what would happen on the page when I'm clicking on this one. So when I'm clicking, then you can see that the page is reloading. Every time that I'm clicking, then the page is reloading. And that is actually the correct behavior of like the submit button. But in our case, we might not be interested to have that kind of behavior on the button. Uh, we, want, we might not want to submit like the form, rather we might want to do like uh, kinds of things, let's say, you know, just validations or um, when we are uh, using like the Ajax uh, to send like the values, um, or anything of that kind. And for that matter, uh, this kind of behavior, which is reloading the page is a little bit heavy because it has to go all the way back and then reload like everything from the top to bottom. And that, that has like a little bit of a toll on, on the page. And especially when you are having like a lot of, um, you know, just costly kind of uh, processes which are going to be handled on that component, then reloading is going to be just a little bit expensive. So uh, there are ways that we can avoid that one. And the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we have to know like when this thing is submitted. So we're going to use on submit and we're going to use uh, this that submit or handle submit, handle submit. So we're going to go here, the usual way and handle submit equals event. And we're going to do that one. So uh, stopping uh, stopping the default behavior. Oh, the behavior. In order to do that, then we're going to use. Um, then we're going to what we. So we have to understand like what's going to be just um, uh, what we what we are trying to do. And over over here, what we are trying to do is when we are submitting. Let me save this one. And we don't want to submit uh, this thing all all the way. You know, just this one is going to be what is going to be just happening and that we don't want to do that one. And whenever you want to do that, then all you have to do will be just event uh, prevent default. And if I do that, uh, and if I come here, then you can see that it's not reloading by now. And you might be wondering like, why would I be interested to that? And the first one is, as I've said, this one is like a little bit costly. And uh, when, when we are using like the React app, uh, we are more or less using like the single page application and we want to apply the changes only on the area that we're interested in. Otherwise, like applying, you know, just everywhere is not going to be, or all the time is not going to be just a good idea. Meaning uh, reloading the page like again and again is not a good idea. That is one thing. 
But there are also other areas who might be uh, interested to utilize this case, which is, let's say we have uh, a link. And when we are clicking on the link, all we wanted to do is just to use the uh, clicking part of like the link, not to follow, for example, the uh, path, which is associated with uh, the, uh, the link. And in that case, also, this is going to be just uh, much more useful in that we don't uh, go or we don't follow the link, rather we're going to be just only handling the click event. And then after that, if we want to follow, then we can do that one, but you know, just uh, we can avoid the default behavior of like following that one. Uh, so this is um, one thing that we have to remember, like whenever we want to stop the default behavior of like whether it is a submit button or the anchor or anything of that kind. Uh, now from here, then it would be just a matter of like accessing all the values from the, um, from the, you know, like from the status that we have or from the state that we are having uh, on this one, which is for the text value, for the language, or if we have like any other value that we are collecting, then we have, we have like the possibility of just accepting that one. So if I say console.look and then this that uh, text value, because we have already, was that like from the text value? Uh, not text value, it's going to be just from the state, right? So we're going to have like uh, over here, uh, state that text value. And uh, for the checkboxes, we're going to use like pretty much the same thing as well. And if we have like any other input, um, part of the input element that we have used, whether it is uh, select or whether it is like the text area or input box or anything of that kind, then we have the uh, access inside this one, just like the way we have been accessing it from each or corresponding event handlers that we have been doing. So once we click on this one, if I want to, for example, just simply log, just to see that I have an access to that of the text, the text value. If I come here and if I go to the console, let me create that one. And inside here, if we uh, have a value in the, in the uh, event handler, so let's have that. And if I click on, the, click on this, then you're going to see like the values in the event handler, which was a part of like that the input is also available under the event handler of like the button. So th this would make it much more easier to go from here uh, anywhere, uh, whether it is like the validations or whether it is just submitting from here and then to sort of like the remote server or anything that we want to do, we can perform it uh, from here. The only thing that I wanted to show you is on this one, we can utilize the usual form. And when uh, that we can perform it using like the on submit and uh, using like the handler on that one. Uh, well, it's not always necessary just to have that one. You can also implement it using the other way. Like, uh, you know, just basically you can have like the button and then you can have like the click event on the button itself and implement it. But this one makes it like more um, compatible with the previous way of doing it. So it's easier just to handle because this is how we have been doing it like on the normal HTML, having the form and then on submit, we're going to submit like the values back to the server. So uh, that one and one thing, one more thing just to remember is just the implementation of like the event prevent, um, event that prevent default whenever we want to um, avoid the default behavior of like the sum of the elements that we're going to be dealing with. All right, so that was all about like the form handling on this video. Uh, hopefully you've got something from this one. And if that's the case, just don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for your attention.